Well, welcome back, guys, to Nomadic Kayak Fishing. Now, today marks the seventh year that I've been fishing from this here Viking Pro Fish 400. I, uh, over the years, I've had a lot of questions at the beach, really, about just what my setup is, how I do things. So I figured after seven years, it's probably a good time to just share my setup with you guys. This is a Viking Pro Fish 400 light. The hull length is 4.1 meters, the beam width is uh, 76 centimeters, and the hull weight is 26 kilos. I don't know what that is in pounds, probably about 65 pounds, which makes the boat light enough to lift on and off the roof, and also long enough to punch through chop and head out in open waters. I bought this kayak second hand, seven years ago for $1,200 on Trade Me. All of my savings from about four years of doing house chores went into this boat and it was a very, very good investment. I've been very impressed so far, so let's get into it. I'll start you guys off at the bow and we'll just give you a full rundown of my setup. As you can see, the kayak is uh, pretty streamlined and there's not too much happening in the way of gizmos and gadgets and that's for one very good reason what I've found over the years kayak fishing is the more streamlined the better all your systems need to be in check and they need to be like streamlined and flush so everything goes smoothly and there's nothing really that can go wrong the problem with a lot of kayak setups that I see is all of these fancy gadgets and gizmos and they just break and they just make it a lot more difficult to catch fish. So I've kept my, my setup pretty simple. I started off with uh, a much more clunky rig really, but nowadays she's pretty streamlined. All the way bow to end, the kayak comes stock standard with a grab handle, and it usually comes stock standard with a bungee configuration a little bit different than this on the bow. Now I've changed my system to just a simple strap across with two beads and the reason that I had that is so that when I'm launching through surf I can take a rod and I can slide the tip under the bead right up to the bow like so and have the, the rod sitting like that. That's just so that if I flip the kayak while I'm coming in through the surf I don't have to worry about snapping rods on the sand. The next thing when we run down this boat is another factory standard on the Viking 400s is a sealed waterproof quarter turn hatch. I store my battery in a waterproof box inside there. I'll get to that in a little bit. And then the other, the last thing on the bow really is the start of the running rig which is a just a small block on a D saddle which is inserted into these factory inserts. Those are brass threaded inserts so there's no intrusion into the hull. Another thing that I'm really conscious about is watertight integrity with my kayak. I don't want to be sinking when I'm way out in the wop somewhere. Moving down from the bow section of the boat we're now on to sort of the main hub of the kayak. This is where all the action happens all the good stuff and uh, the start of it all starts off with the central mounted HD star port this is where I run my camera boom or a rod holder usually it's my camera boom and I really like these because they're all universal and interchangeable so you can just unlock it pop the boom out move it around drop any accessory you like in there and she just locks in like that. Coming back from that we have our sliding foot tracks that are made for your rudders but I don't run a rudder on my kayak. I, I, I don't find that I need it necessarily and typically these are fixed in place. They have a locking hinge. I actually removed the hinge from mine because I found it annoying. I'd rather just have it always at the front and not have to deal with it. 
Coming back from that, we have our center hatch. This is the tackle hub, really, of the kayak. It's, uh, it's a good size. I think it's about 20 liters in storage. And it's held in place with bungees. And inside here is where I store my day's tackle, all of my soft baits, jigs, whatnot, drinks, lunch. It can fit everything. And it's very conveniently placed in between my legs. A couple of modifications that I've done to that is I've added my fish finder and on another Railblazer Starport I have a Moby device holder. This is for my cell phone or VHF, whatever I want to put in there really. Helps getting photos, keeps everything in a good spot. Um, yeah, The sounder that I've gone with is the Garmin Striker 3 Plus. And it's, uh, it's a pretty basic unit. It's got GPS and dual transducer frequency. So it helps me find the fish. And it's a very affordable unit. I've had this one here for three years and I believe it was only $300. So very, very pleased with that. Um, definitely a essential bit of kit. I've rigged that into a, um, into a in-water transducer which is mounted under the hull in a recess up under there and that gives me the best possible reading for um for sounder quality really make sure that i get good water temp readings good depth readings and everything like that that sounder unit there is run off a seven amp hour lithium ion hpv battery this is a sealed lithium battery it is amazing it weighs all of 300 grams it's completely waterproof and this one here lives under this quarter turn hatch if i can get it open and it lives in this waterproof box which is mounted to the hull of the in a uh, in a foam housing that I built and I glued that to the hull using Sally's all clear which is about the only glue I could find that will adhere to this polyurethane plastic that the kayaks made out of I couldn't find any other glue if anyone knows of like a other glue that's not really silicone um, let me know because it's the only one I've been able to find but it's it's worked pretty well it's been in there for about five years now and uh, yeah no problems so that all lives neatly in there out of harm's way another couple of modifications that I've done to the center hatch is I've mounted a bait knife that I can swivel around and pull out for easy access I also store my pliers which are tethered on to the kayak so I can't drop them over the side. Really useful to have these at, um, at easy access for unhooking your fish. The last thing that I keep on this hatch is my icky stick. This is a homemade icky stick icky for icky jimmy for spiking the fish in the head. Uh, I made it, oh it would have been six years ago or so and it's a coldy handle, the spike is made out of a 316 stainless bolt that I've just drilled into there and that lives on the deck strapped in nicely. I just made a couple of bungee straps with a bit of plastic, a few knots and that seems to hold it good. Along the side of my center hatch I've also mounted a tape measure on the inside of the clear plastic that way I can measure fish quickly if I just need to know if a fish is going to le is legal size limit. That makes things really, really easy. As you can see, you've got centimeters and inches there. Nice quick access. Coming back from there, we have another quarter turn hatch. And inside this hatch here, I store my liters so I always have a number of liters at the moment in there I've got some um, 25 pound fluorocarbon 
some 100 pound trace and some 60 pound puff trace and that's all stored in the removable bucket in there so that's nice makes re-rigging nice and easy and everything fits in good moving down to the side of the center of the kayak this kayak comes stock standard with flush mounted rod holders on either side these are great for when you're landing a fish you can drop the rod in that rod holder and also when you're re-rigging it comes with two standard grab handles i haven't done anything to these and then on the side here it has these convenient paddle clips where I store my paddle. Now I always tether my paddle to the boat as this is my only form of propulsion and I never want it to be separated from the kayak. So that's just a bit of bungee to a stainless steel carabiner clip and that just clips around the handle there. Some people like to use the, um, the coiled leashes. I don't like them, I find that they tangle and it's really, really frustrating. So I just keep it simple, keep it streamlined with a bungee and a clip. My, car, uh, my paddle isn't anything fancy. It's literally the one that came with the boat. It's just an aluminum shaft, uh, plastic paddles, and uh, yeah, it does the trick. It's not the best, but I don't have the money to buy a carbon fiber one. And uh, well, if it does the job, it does the job really. Moving on to the seat, I've got a nice comfy Dulux kayak seat. Um, as you can see, she's pretty worn in. She's uh, a bit battered and bruised, worse for wear, but that's what happens when you use it every day for, <laughs> for seven years. And on that, I've got this little cushion to keep my bum comfy on those long paddles. This is a homemade one, it's just uh, five layers of yoga mat that I contact glued together into the shape of the seat and it's very comfortable I must say I'm very proud of my work there um, yeah that is an essential for those long trips when your bum's getting sore so yeah that's that's my sitting area it's nothing fancy nothing raised a lot of people will have these raised chairs I don't like to raise the chair because you want to keep your center of gravity nice and low Especially in rough water, the higher your center of gravity is, the less stable the kayak becomes. Now, moving back from the seat, we've got our running rig. And this is on a pulley system that I can run up and down to adjust my drift on the kayak. I will either clip my sea anchor or my just regular anchor to that running rig and that gives me the ability to alter the direction that the kayak's facing in relation to the drift so if I run it off the bow I'll have the bow facing into the wind if I run it off the stern I'll have the stern facing into the wind I typically will run it off the stern so that I can cast forwards of my drift while I'm soft baiting coming back from the running rig I've got the four standard rod holders that come on the kayak. These I'll use for um, trolling lures or traveling. And then another thing that I've added to the kayak is two HD star ports on either side. And I will run these Railblazer adjustable rod holders. I really like these rod holders because I can adjust the angle and rotate them fore and aft. So when I'm fishing with lures, I will typically have them angled out so that I can have one rod in one of these rod, holder, rod holders angled closer to the water so that when I get a bite I don't high stick the rod and it's facing backwards so the lure is drifting behind the kayak. However when I'm fishing stray line or at, at anchor I will rotate the rod holder forwards so that I can cast my straight line baits forward to the kayak and be able to monitor two rod tips at once really easily. Coming back from them, I have my chill pod. This is a great bit of kit. A lot of people will go for the, um, the insulated bags, but I really like the chill pod because it is easy to clean and it just drops in and out. 
I did have some bags for a while and I didn't really like them so I've invested in this one little modification that I've done to this chill pod is I've used spray expanding foam around the edges and that just gives me a little bit more insulation to keep my ice cold and fish in primo condition stored inside the chill pod I will keep my sea anchor this is just my standard drogue and it will fit in there nicely while I'm traveling and this hatch closes down bungee's closed and it's uh, really streamlined not much windage and the whole unit will pop out in and out really easily on the top of my chill pod I have another star port and that one there is so that I can get angles like this so my camera boom can drop into any of the star ports that are mounted all around the kayak this rear star port here I can also put a nav light or a flag for visibility if I'm in um, low light situations so I really like the star ports as you see they're littered all around my kayak they're nice and flush and they don't take up much space they're all universal and they will suit your needs for every situation really and the entire chill pod is held in place with the use of some bungee straps this just has some quick release clips on the side there and it's really easy to take it in and out you just undo that clip there moves back I can undo the clip here and then the whole chill pod lifts out of the kayak so I can put it in my car seal it up no worries as you see without the chill pod there's a massive storage well if you don't want to store fish but pretty much every time I'm on the water I have the chill pod with me because it's just so convenient the bungees that hold the chill pod in place are just held down with a few little pad eye saddles that I've screwed into the deck of the kayak there's one there one there and that bungee just runs through the pad eye comes back through the rear handles through and it's just one piece all the way across that way when I'm loading the chill pod it's as simple as picking it up dropping it in and it's just one clip across there and then we pull the second clip over clip it on and we're good to go now that's locked in place it's not going anywhere and uh, it's as simple as that to get on the water moving right back to the end of the kayak you can see the end of my running rig is here it's again just another stainless saddle into some threaded inserts with a block so this is one continuous bit of rope that runs all the way up to the bow and it has attached to it a small clip this is all one piece of rope that is spliced at the end and it's covered with a little bit of heat shrink to a brass clip that makes it easy to clip on and off to whatever I need to tie off to. Again at the back of the kayak we've got our drain plug or bung as a lot of people call it and another star port. This one here comes factory and it's typically used for a flag. In terms of transporting the kayak I'm running it on a Sea Tug Railblazer trolley. This is a really convenient way to just carry a kayak down the beach, but really any trolley will work as long as it's got wheels and as long as you can drop it on and off the kayak nice and quickly. That one there just straps on with a simple quick release strap. So just drop that strap off and we're good to go. Easy as that, really. I always like to carry a, a bike lock with me when I'm launching so that way I can um, I can just lock my trailer to a tree and I don't have to walk you know 10 minutes back to the car saves a little bit of time that's a pro tip for you 
In terms of safety from the kayak, I think it shouldn't be overlooked, but I do think that a lot of people look at it the wrong way. A lot of people think about it as a good flotation device or life jacket and means of communication. I do think that's important, however, I think a lot of people overlook what actually can go wrong. So, the way that I like to think about safety is what can go wrong will go wrong. So make sure that nothing can go wrong. And what I mean by that is simplifying your systems and your techniques to make sure that you can't get any tangles or problems happening on the water. So as you've seen with my setup, everything's really streamlined. There's nothing on the kayak that can get tangled around me and cause problems. So my tip for safety is carry a personal locator beacon and set up your kayak so that you can't get in trouble with your gear. The most common problem that I see people having is tangles. If you've got lines and leashes and gizmos and gadgets all over your kayak, you can get tangled up in them and end up in a bad situation. So keep things simple and precise, bare minimums, minimize your clutter, and that will keep you the safest on the water. That is my tip for staying safe. Well guys, there you have it. That's the full rundown of my fishing kayak setup. I hope you found this video um, useful or helpful if you're setting up a kayak at the moment. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you're setting up. I'd love to hear it. Anyway, um, if there's one takeaway from this video that I want you to have, it's that keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Everything needs to be streamlined. Don't spend a bunch of money. I think my entire setup probably run me about uh, maybe $2,000 at most. Sounder, battery, kayak, paddle, seat, everything. I do things on a budget, if you can't tell. But that's the system that works for me. I hope you found this useful and uh, tight lines everyone. Cheers for watching Nomadic Kayak Fishing. I'll catch you in the next one. You.